Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome once again to another teaching session. I know it's going to be wonderful as well. I know it's going to be awesome. Yahweh is always amazing. Yahweh is always teaching us new things. And I started last week talking about what scripture is, what scripture is. And one of the last, one, 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 the last place we got to, the last place we got to last week was the fact that I was, I was, sorry, sorry don't mind me. The, so one, where, where we got to last week, last week we, we, we quoted a lot of scriptures, we quoted a lot of quotations, um, supporting and defining what scripture is all about. And we also saw what the apostles and, and Yahshua himself, what, what they saw or understood to be scripture what the understanding of scripture was so uh, i believe that we uh, as we continue this week we will we'll be able to conclude we'll be able to finish it so that we tackle the next subject next week the, the next week so welcome welcome to the page once again bless everyone that has subscribed bless everyone that has liked bless everyone that shared i know that you had an amazing week and i know the week ahead of us is also going to be awesome hallelujah yeah, bless you for supporting those those of you new on this platform. Bless you for supporting this movement. Bless you for supporting the truth. Bless you for even desiring the truth, for seeking after the truth. I know your life can never be the same after you've discovered the truth. Hallelujah. So last week, this is what we get. We got to last week. We we're talking about uh, Yeshua. Yeshua. What Yeshua clearly stated. Uh, Yeshua clearly stating that the ways and the things that he came to do were not his own, but he was ordained by the Father to do them. Meaning he had no claim over any commandment or changing or argument. He didn't do any of that. Everything Yeshua came to do was exactly what the Father has asked him to do. And that's what we go to. And the final thing that I spoke about last week was that um, what, what is the importance of knowing what scripture is? And I said it is important because it is your ticket to salvation. It's your ticket to eternal life. Knowing what the scripture is, knowing what the scripture is about, is your ticket to eternal life. That's why it's so important that you know what scripture is about. Hallelujah. So we're going to continue this week. And the last, the last scripture I quoted last week was was uh, Matthew seven twenty one to twenty nine. That Yeshua was talking about the fact that in the last days, a lot of people will say, "Teacher, teacher." Um, it's not not everyone who says. Matthew seven twenty one. Not everyone who says teacher, teacher to me um, would enter into the kingdom, but it's only those who does the will of the Father. So automatically, it makes you understand that the only how to get into the kingdom of our Father is not through any means, but by knowing the Scriptures, by doing His will, by fulfilling His law. That's the key to eternal life. So I want to continue this week and talk more into Scriptures and that 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 uh, the importance of knowing what Scripture is. And the first point I'm going to make this week. This and it's gonna come with a lot of a lot of um, scriptures. The first point I'm gonna make this week is that scripture is the embodiment of life itself. Scripture is the embodiment of life. Scripture makes up what life is all about. Scripture is the totality of life. When you when you have scripture, you have life, and that's what that we will start. That's what we're gonna start from this week. Father, I bl let's let's pray. Father. We, we, I honor you, I adore you, I bless you for the opportunity again to come before your children, to come before your people to teach and understand your way. We pray, Father, that you give us an understanding heart, you give us an understanding mind, you, un you open the eyes, the, the eyes of, of our heart, the eyes of our mind, and you open even our very eyes that every scale will fall off and that we begin to see the truth from the lies. We begin to see the wheat from the seeds. I pray in the authority of your name as we study your word. Because the Bible says that where two or three are gathered, there you are. And we know for a fact that your presence is here for everybody gathered on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We know your presence is so much here. So I pray, oh Father, that cause our lives not to be the same from today. Transform our life, renew our, change our life. Let it be this transformative spirit that would obliviate everything we've ever known. Bring deliverance to us. Bring healing to us, even as you study your word. In the authority of your name, Father, I pray. Hallelujah. I'm super excited. So we continue. Scripture is the embodiment of life itself. Scripture is the embodiment of life, of life itself. So we look at uh, Matthew 19. Matthew 19, 17. He says what? Matthew 19, 17. Says what? But he said to him, Why do you question me about righteousness? There's only one who is righteous, and it's the standards of Standard of perfection. Sorry, I just got this right. Nineteen, Matthew nineteen seventeen. Yes, so it's only the standard of perfection. 
and that is Yahweh. So if you would enter into life, keep the laws of Yahweh. So if you would enter into what? Eternal life, keep the laws of Yahweh. So your key to eternal life is by what? Keeping. This was Yahshua's own mouth. Hallelujah. This was Yahshua's own mouth. That the key to eternal life, the key to eternal life is fulfilling the scriptures, fulfilling the laws. Without keeping the law, you cannot have access to eternal life. Hallelujah. Let's look at Deuteronomy 8 1. Deuteronomy 8 1. What does it say? Deuteronomy 8 1. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Deuteronomy 8 1 says, you must be careful to observe and do every law which I give you today so that you may have life and multiply and go in and possess the land Yahweh vowed on oath to your fathers. You see what? Be careful to do and observe every law which I gave to you today that you may what? Live. I mean, observing the law brings what? Life allows you to live. Going against the law, breaking the law, only brings you to death. And the law is what? The scripture. So observing the Sabbath, that's why it's important to know the scripture. Because as you know scripture and observe scripture, you gain access to eternal life. Hallelujah. You gain access to eternal life. That's because they say in Deuteronomy 5.33, it says what? You must walk in all the ways of Yahweh your father has commanded you, so that you may live. So that it may be well with you in the land. You wonder why it's not well with us. Because all of us, most of us are being taught to run away from scripture and pick up the Christian Bible called the New Testament. That's way, In order for you to have life and to do well in all your doings and to what? And to what? So you may prolong your days in the land which you shall possess. So long life, long life is basically dependent on how well you observe the laws of Yahweh. How well you observe the laws of Yahweh. That is your ticket to long life. That is your ticket to eternal life. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 20, 20. Deuteronomy 30, 20. Deuteronomy 30, 20 says what? Let me quickly read it. Deuteronomy 30, 20. It says, so you may love Yahweh your father by listening to him and then obeying him. He told, and then obeying him, sorry. Hold fast to him for he is your life. Who is your life? Yahweh, the Almighty. Sorry. Hold fast to him for what? He is your life. He will also give you many years in the land. He had, he Vow to give to your fathers. He'll give you many, many years. So you see, when you observe and do the will of Father and do the law, Yahweh does what? Gives you many years to live. You wonder why a lot of people are dying in our generation at a very young age? Because we are not observing the scriptures. We are not doing the laws. We are not doing the words of Yahweh. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 32 47. 32 47 says something interesting. It says, what? These are not just idle words. These are not just idle words for you. These laws mean life to you. So the laws, they mean what? Life. They are life. They, they are life giving. The laws, they will give you life. You will live. You will have eternal life. And that's the purpose of the word, of, of the law. To give you what? Life, not death. Hallelujah. It's to what? Bring you life. Let's look at what Proverbs says. What Proverbs says? Proverbs 6, 20. Proverbs 6, 20. What does it say? Proverbs 6, 20. It says what? My son, keep Yahweh's laws and do not forsake the teachings and instructions in the law, Torah, given by Yahweh. Bind them in your mind forever and tie them around you. Bind them in your mind forever. It means for the rest of your life, keep the laws of Yahweh uptight. Bind them in your mind and tie them around your neck. Why? Because they give life. 
Hallelujah. Because what? They give life. The words of Yahweh, what? Give the Lord. He said, keep them in your minds forever. How then do you now say in our generation that we are done with the law? How then do you say that? That the law is dealt with. That it's been nailed to the cross. How can you say that? Hallelujah. Proverbs 11, Proverbs 7, 1 to 3. Proverbs 7, 1 to 3 says what? My son, guide my words. Treasure my laws within you. Treasure, oh treasure. Guide my words. Treasure my laws within you. Keep my commandments and you will live. Why do you want to die? Hallelujah. Why do you want I say, keep my command. Do you want to live? Let me ask you a question. Do you really want to live? Are you sure you want to live? Are you sure you want to have a fullness of life, grow in your old age, outlive your dream? Are you sure you want to do that? Then I got a secret for you to do that. Keep the commandments of Yahweh. Is this not simple? The Father says, keep my laws. You have a long life, a prolonged life, life with blessing. Hallelujah. Keep my commandments and you will live. Keep my laws, the Torah instructions as an apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tables of your mind. The law should never depart from you. Hallelujah. The law should never depart. The law of Yahweh should never depart from you. It should always be tied close to your neck and on your fingertips and in your mind. Because what? They give life. They give life. Psalm, Psalm, Psalms 19. Psalms 19. Psalms 19 verses. Psalms 19 verses 7 to 10. It says what? The law of Yahweh are perfect. The laws of Yahweh are perfect. Converting the whole person. You see that? Converting the whole person. The testimony of Yahweh is sure. Making the simple one wise. The testimony of Yahweh makes sure. The statutes of Yahweh are right. Rejoicing. This, I want to read it from the NLT. It, it says it beautiful in the NLT. Um, Psalm 19. Psalm 19. Let, let me, 7 to 10. Let me read it from the NLT. It says it beautifully in the NLT. So, let's only read this from the NLT. 19, 7 to 10. It says what? The instructions of Yahweh are perfect, reviving their soul. This is the word I was looking for. The instructions of Yahweh what? are perfect. It does what? It revives the soul. Meaning if somebody is losing their life with the weight of Yahweh, with the loss, you can revive the person's soul. So keeping the Lord, there's no weariness. You never grow weary. They that wait upon Yahweh shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wing eagles, wings as eagles. They shall be strong and not weary. So the word of Yahweh, it revives. The more you meditate, the more it's reviving your soul. So every dead cell in you begins to get revived because of what you are studying the word. You are teaching, you are meditating, you are chewing on the word. You are chewing on the way. The decrees of Yahweh are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The commandments of Yahweh are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commandments of Yahweh are clear, giving insight for the living. Reverence for Yahweh is pure, lasting forever. The laws of Yahweh are true. Each one is fair. The laws of Yahweh are what? Are true. Each one is what? Fair. They are more desirable than gold, even the finest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even honey dropping from the comb. Somebody will say, and pay in their power, is it? Hallelujah. If you don't like this, what, what do you want in this life? Keep my Lord, they are more far more precious. Father, have mercy. Have mercy on us, Father. Have mercy on us. Have, have mercy. Psalm, let's go to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Verses 97. Psalm 119, verses 97. It says, so, Oh, how I love your law. 
It is my meditation all day long. Your law makes me wiser than my enemies because they are possession at all times. God, they are my possession. Your law makes me wiser than my enemies because they are my possession at all times. I have more understanding than all my teachers because you I have more understanding than all my teachers because of your testimonies as my meditation. Hundred. Sorry. I don't know why I'm yawning. Hundred. See, we understand more than the Asian because we keep your precepts. We understand more. You see, keeping the laws of Yah gives you a lot of wisdom. It gives you a lot of it. It it it, it takes you deep. It makes you wise. We understand more than the Asian because we keep your precepts. We have restrained our feet from the path of evil in order that we, we may keep your law. We have not turned away from your judgment for you, for you yourself have taught us how sweet are your laws in our taste, to our taste, sorry, sweeter than honey from, sweeter than honey to our mouth. From your precepts, we get understanding. Therefore, we hate every part of falsehood and false teaching. Therefore, we hate every part of what? Falsehood and false teaching. Hallelujah. Let's go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 20. Yekisia, or what you say, Ezekiel. Ezekiel 20. 20, 11. Ezekiel 20, 11 says what? And I gave them my statute and showed them my judgment, which if a man does, he will live by them. But you see, do you know why I'm relaxed now? Because there's nothing else to say. You are seeing how important the, the scriptures are. So you cannot tell me it's not important not knowing what scriptures is all about. Which if, sorry, which if a man does, he will live by them. Which if a man does, he will live by them. Verses, verses, um, verses 20. Says, so, hallow, and hallow, make holy my Sabbath. Make holy what? My Sabbath. Make holy my Sabbath. And there will be a sign between me and you, so that you may know that I am Yahweh your Father. The Lord. One of the examples he gave is a Sabbath. So every time you keep the Sabbath, Yahweh identify you as his child. It's, it's a rule in the realms of the spirit. Hallelujah. So what's the conclusion now? What's the conclusion now? What is the conclusion? What is the conclusion? To me, it doesn't matter what your pastor say, your pastor think. It doesn't matter what you think you say. It doesn't matter what anybody you say. It doesn't even matter what the apostle said. It doesn't matter at all. The only thing that matters, it all comes down to scripture, what scripture says. It all comes down to scripture. It all comes down to what scripture says. That's the most important. That's all that matters. What is the scripture saying? That's all that matters. If you lose that, if you lose that, then the, I don't know what is there for you. But that is all that matters, what scripture says. Apart from that, nothing else matters. It's not about what the Apostle John, Luke, uh, uh, Matthew, what all of them said. No, it doesn't matter. I don't care about them. You shouldn't either. The most important thing is what is the scripture saying? And I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Um, so Paul said in, in Romans, Romans 11.26, Paul said in Romans 11.26 that, that it is not by works, but it is by faith, right? Romans 11.26. It is not. And so all Israel will be saved, and it is written, the deliverer will depart from it. No, 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 no. I'm reading it wrong. Romans 11.6. Yeah, sorry. If by undeserved mercy, let, let me again read from the NLT. Let me read from the NLT. Romans 11.22. Romans 11.6, sorry. Let me read from the NLT. It says what? And since it is true God's kindness, then it is not by our works, 
For in that case, Yahweh's grace or God's grace will not be what it really is, free and undeserved. This is what it is not by works. So in, 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 in Romans 4, I believe, Paul, Paul went to talk about Abraham and Abraham was father of faith and how Abraham didn't have to do it by works and all of that. So Paul's opinion is that we have to do it by works. That it is not by faith alone, it is by works and faith. It is by faith, sorry. That's what Paul is saying. It is not by works, it is by faith. It is not by works. It is by... That's what Paul is saying. So, what, what am I driving at? Okay, Paul was a, Paul is claimed to be an apostle of Yahshua or Yahweh. James was the bishop of the house. So, at least, what he also said carried weight, right? It's not just about... James also is, was a bishop. So, let's go to James 2. And I'll read something. And then you ask me, did the apostles have different opinions about what scripture is? If the apostles did, then why do you question me if I don't believe what some pastor, apostle, or bishop, or somebody is saying? I shouldn't believe it. Hallelujah. I shouldn't believe it. The only thing I would believe and make sure I do is what? The scripture. That's the only thing I would believe and make sure I do. The scripture. It says what? Let me read the book of James. This is probably the last scripture I'll read for today. And we are done with this subject. I pray you learned something. I pray you took something. I pray you are taking something. Book of James 2, 1. My brother, do not hold the faith of our glorious King, Yahshua Messiah, which with respect of persons. Do not do that with respect of persons. For suppose there, there comes into your congregation a man with gold rings in fine apparel, and there should come in also a man in filthy clothing. If you pay special attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say to him, You sit here in the best place. Whilst you say to the poor man, You stand here. So, you stand here or sit at my feet. You see, this is what happened. This, 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 of course, happening in our churches today. We have preferential prayers. We have preferential treatment. We have preferential everything. In our churches today. So this is not far from what is happening in our churches today. But let me continue to read. Have you not shown partiality among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers. Has not Yahweh chosen the poor of the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which has which he has promised to those who love him? But you despise the poor and do not and do not the rich oppress and do not rich men oppress persecute or drag you into court do they not blaspheme that worthy name Yahweh by which you are called if you fulfill the royal law according to scripture you must love your neighbor as yourself but if you show respect to persons you commit sin and convicted by the law as transgression. For whoever keeps the, the whole law yet offends in one point, he is guilty of all. For he who said, do not commit adultery and also do not murder. For he who said, do not commit adultery also said, do not commit murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery yet you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so do as the law, as those who are being judged by the law of Yahweh. For the judgment will be unmerciful to the one most practicing mercy. But those who practice mercy will rejoice in judgment. Let me take that again. For the judgment will be unmerciful to those who not, to the one not practicing mercy. But those who practice mercy will rejoice. 14. What does it profit, my brothers, if a man says he has faith, but does not have works? What does it profit a man if you say that I have faith, but I don't, I don't have works? What does it profit a man? This is what J James asked him. He said that you don't profit anything. If you say you have faith and there's no works to back your faith, it's meaningless. Hallelujah. 
The faith is not able to save him. If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which, is, which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Exactly. When you tell me, when you tell me that you, know, you move by faith, they start by faith, and you don't support with any ways. When you probably say, and you don't support with any ways, how is that going to be established? This was James' opinion. In this same way, the faith, if it does not have works, is dead, being what? Alone. Yes, many may say, yes, a man may say, you have faith and have works. Show your faith without works, and I will show my faith with works. You believe that there is, in, there is one Father. You do well. Demons also believe this and tremble. But you, but you, but are you willing to know, oh vain man, that the faith without works is dead? You can read for yourself a second. So basically, what, what James has an opinion that faith is with works. You, can, you cannot leave faith without works. Paul or shall we say that it's all about faith without works. You cannot do it with works. So these, these two people are in different opinion. What do you do then? The only thing you do is go to the scriptures and read what the scripture is talking about, what the scripture is referring to. That's what will make all the difference. And that's why it's so important for you, beloved, so that you don't listen to the doctrines that are being preached today, but you listen to the scriptures. You go to, you go to the foundations, you go to the scriptures, you read and listen to what Yahweh, your father, has to say about that situation. Stop listening to men, but rather run to your father and listen to him. And your life can never be the same. Once again, bless you for joining this page. I pray you've learned something today. I pray it's my sincere prayer that you learn something today and your life will not be the same after today. I know that for a fact because every time we come into the presence of the Almighty, an old thing is taken away, an old character, an old behavior. Something old is taken away and it's, it's replaced by the new thing. Yahweh bless you. Don't forget, I said if you have any deliverance case, anything you want to be prayed with, and whatever it is, and uh, uh, you, you need Yahweh, whatever it is, just inbox me your details. Anybody you know that is sick, that doctors are declared impossible. Even those that are sick, that doctors haven't said anything at all. Make sure you inbox me. Let's just pray with them. Let's, let's stand in the God for them. And, and I, have a prayer, we, I have a prayer page as well. It's an amazing platform full of fire, people on fire, people ready to pray. So if you want to join, if you want to join, um, if you want to join the prayer page, I was trying to look for the number. If you want to join the prayer page, um, and this is on the way. Anyway, if you want to join the prayer page, please send me your WhatsApp contact on, on WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Send me your WhatsApp contact. It's a prayer prayer platform. We pray all the time, and it's going to be an, it's, it, it, it's amazing, it's simply amazing. So if you want to be part of this prayer platform, please inbox me your, your WhatsApp number. Inbox me your WhatsApp number on Facebook or Instagram or or. Facebook or Instagram, yeah. Inbox me your WhatsApp number on Facebook or Instagram and we'll add you to the page and I know your life will not be the same. Don't forget, if you know anybody that is sick, that needs healing in any area of their body, in any part, of, if you know anybody looking for a child, searching for a child, is there any, if you know anybody believing and trusting us for something specific, please don't hesitate to call me. Or don't hesitate to send me your details in my inbox, in my inbox, I, uh, that, that is Facebook or Instagram. Hallelujah. You, 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 you can also email me your questions. You can also email me your requests. Whatever you need, whatever you are praying to Yahweh about, you can email me uh, at Samuel Kujobento at, at uh, Samuel Kujobento at gmail.com. Samuel is S A M U Y L. Not, not, and it's one S A M U Y L. S A M U I Y L. Kojo K O J O Bento B E T I L at gmail.com. I, I, I say it again. Samuel, S-A-M-U-Y-L, Kojo, K-O-J-O, Bento, B-E-N-T-I-L, at gmail.com. Send me your emails, whatever it is. Let's talk about it. Any questions you have, let's talk about it. I know your life will never be the same. Father, I pray 
and the authority of your name that you continue to move, break down walls, break down altars. I, I, I pray in the authority of your name by the power ordained in my mouth. I pull down every wall that is oppressing any member of this platform. Father, anyone suffering from sexual immorality, anyone suffering from sexual sins, sexual sins, I pray from prostitution, from masturbation. I pray, oh Father, that you touch them and you deliver them and you bring them out. You bring them out. You bring them up. Any disorder sexually, I pray and put it in order. Prophet in the authority of your name, oh Father, I pray. Let their lives never be the same. Let us let them live a transformative life. Let their life so transform that it will just blow their minds. I pray, Father, by divine power and authority, extend your healing to everyone that is sick. Anyone looking for a baby, searching for a baby, oh Father, fill the womb with the fruit of the womb. I bless you. Teach us, continue to teach us, continue to lead us into your truth. Because we want your name to be glorified. Don't forget, if you want to be part of the prayer platform, just inbox me your details, your WhatsApp number, and I'll add you to the platform. Hallelujah. Yahweh bless you. Have a blessed